we have the the energy flow right so as you guys know that sun is the basic source of energy for any ecosystem to operate well with few uh, few exceptions like uh, in the ecosystem of deep sea hydrothermal areas let's forget about that but leaving those exceptions apart sun is the basic source of energy for any ecosystem to operate okay so um as you guys must be knowing that um there is uh, something called par or you can pronounce it as par this is the photosynthetic photosynthetic active radiation okay so as you must be knowing that um less than 50% of the sunlight uh comes under the par okay so uh, just for your knowledge uh, par is uh falls in the wavelength range of 400 to 700 nanometer okay and uh, par is nothing but the amount of light available for plants during photosynthesis so yes so the power is the amount of light available for plants during photosynthesis which lies in the wavelength range of 400 to 700 nanometer well this part uh, is um, only less than uh, you know 50% of the sunlight uh, falls in under par and uh, to our surprise only 2 to 10% of the par is utilized by plants okay only 2 to 10% of the par is utilized by the plants during photosynthesis right so um plants are using this par okay so what are they doing with this par they they have to be something why is they are using this sunlight obviously they are using this sunlight to prepare food so these plants become the autotroph of our ecosystem right these plants become the autotroph of our ecosystem because they are using this light to prepare food but there are consumers as well which are directly or indirectly dependent on autotroph directly or indirectly dependent on autotroph for food right right so um directly they can uh, directly the, the the direct ones can be called as the herbivores right because these herbivores the directly dependent ones will be the herbivores because uh, these are grass eating and plant eating so they are directly dependent on autotrophs whereas there are the indirectly dependent ones also
which are the carnivores because carnivores are not the plant eating ones okay so carnivores food are the herbivores and herbivores food are the autotrophs so you can say in a way that the carnivores are indirectly dependent on the autotrophs because they are dependent on the herbivores and herbivores are dependent on the autotrophs that's why carnivores are indirectly dependent on the autotrophs so the interaction of these autotrophs when with the consumers is what makes the food chain okay so here i'm using a new term which is the food chain i'm writing it over here okay so this these autotrophs and consumers make up the food chain so what is a food chain a food chain is a linear network of organisms in which energy is trapped and passed from one organism to the other so what am i saying that food chain is nothing but a linear network of organisms in which energy is being trapped and passed from one organism to the other so if i get to make a food chain i can say let's make let's take an example okay so this is grass okay well the deer is dependent on the gas on the grass for food okay and the lion is dependent on the deer for food so here i make a food chain and as you can very well see it is linear in nature okay it's linear in shape that's why i call food chain a linear network of organisms right so i'll call i'll say that the grass is the producer right because it was the autotroph the deer is the primary consumer it i'm calling it as primary because it was directly depending on the autotroph for food and i call the lion the secondary consumer okay because it was indirectly depending on the grass and because it's the secondary one as a consumer so i call it a secondary consumer well there are even examples when we come for a fourth trophic level which is of the which we call the tertiary uh, consumer like we can take the example of phytoplankton zoo plankton fish man so here the phytoplankton becomes our producer the zoo plankton becomes our primary consumer the fish becomes a secondary consumer and the man becomes a tertiary consumer okay so the levels or the stages of a food chain stages or levels of food chain are called trophic level so if you are asked what is a trophic level then you can easily define that a trophic level is a stage or a level of 
a food chain okay so here we can see that this is a lower trophic level and the tc is the higher trophic level okay so um these are these uh, trophic levels uh but you know um there is a restriction on the number of trophic levels and it is because there is a law which is being followed in the nature which is known as the 10% law and according to this 10% law whatever energy uh, i mean the amount of energy that will be passed from one trophic level to a higher trophic level will only be 10% of the pre previous one's energy okay so um there cannot be an infinite infinite amount of energy right there would be a certain amount of energy which is why we are restricted on the number of our trophic levels so you can write down and uh, this is very very important it's often asked in your board exams what is the 10% law the 10% law okay the 10% law states that the amount of energy passed on from one trophic level to a greater or a higher trophic level is 10% of the previous trophic levels energy okay so whatever was the amount of energy in the first trophic level the second trophic level will only have 10% of it okay and same will be the case for the <clears throat> the secondary consumer for for the secondary consumer it will only have the 10% of the primary consumer one's energy and the tertiary consumer one will be ha will have the least energy because it will have 10% of what secondary consumer has okay so this was a 10% law and um, let me just define what is a standing crop okay so it is an, uh, this is also an important term that uh, the standing crop is the amount of biomass or organic matter present in an area okay so this is a standing crop which says it is the amount of biomass or organic matter present in an area okay uh, so standing crop is really easy so as i was talking about the 10% law if someone asks you why is the number of trophic levels restricted in a food chain it is because the nature follows the 10% law the ecosystem follows the 10% law which states that the amount of energy passed on from one trophic level to a greater or higher trophic level is only 10% of the previous trophic levels energy okay so uh, this is all under energy flow